Has it really come to this? Has it come to this? I travel all the way to Cambridge, Massachusetts. Very far, because I want to play Netrunner. Right? And not only do I want to play Netrunner, more so than I want to win, the number one thing I want to do is play Netrunner against people who I have never played Netrunner with before. Right? You go to a faraway tournament to see new competition, new decks, surprises. And having only one loss up against my friend with only one loss. Here we are. The match you have seen most often, more often than any other match I have recorded for you. Here in round four of Swiss at the Cambridge Regional Netrunner Tournament of 2014. As me on the left, and the third Chris I have faced in a row, Chris H. from New York City on the right. I'm playing Kate, and he's playing Jinteki Personal Evolution. Deus Ex, people. It's a card. We've done it before. There's no reason I can't do it again. But why do I have to play against someone who I play against all the time? Can't I play against someone else? Anyone else here? Any of the tens of people that I do not know? Right? There's only maybe eight people there from our New York City group out of, I think, 67. There's 59 people I could have played against in this round that I did not know and have not played. Well, maybe 57, counting the two people I played in rounds, well, the two Chris's I played in round one and two. And here I am playing Chris H. again. Again, again. Oh, we accidentally cut the wrong decks or something, or who knows. Oh, boy. Alrighty. So, this is a great matchup uh, for competition-wise, because New York can't lose. Uh, it's also a really bad matchup, because New York's guaranteed to lose. Um... You know, at you know, worst, one of us will be three losses, and at best, uh, one of us will only I still only have one loss going into round five. Um, no, I think this is round five, right? One, I had a buy. Two, I split. Three, I won both. Yeah, this is round four. Yeah, going into round five, it's someone from New York. Is either going to have one loss, two loss, or three loss. <laughs> Go Team New York. Why did we have to play each other? Why? Why? He was dreading it as much as I was, though. Or at least he seemed to be, because he, you know... Uh, I've played this Jinteki a zillion times. I'm the person who knows what to do, nominally. Uh, leading into this round... This Jinte his Jinteki deck killed everyone. Even though I made a zillion videos showing everyone how to beat his Jinteki deck, people didn't watch them, they didn't know, or they did watch them and it didn't matter. They all got killed. He's coming into this round with three flat lines. Three. Alright, drop an inti. Why did I drop an Inti? Because I had it in my hand. <laughs> and I know he's got Eli's. Here he goes, remote time. Let's see, psychic field, psychic field, snare, right? <laughs> right? That's what it's got to be. Test run. Deus Ex. Where is it? Boom. Deus Ex. I'm not afraid of your remotes now. Boom. Ela hands. Can't have that. I will take that. I'll take my net damage. It's a parasite. Oh, I would have liked to have that parasite to get rid of one of his pups. I know this pup out there. I know he plays Yugura and Pup. Those are his favorite ice. So, if I can parasite them, that's really good.
Gonna draw. And I'm gonna draw. It is no longer my turn. What's gonna happen? Oh, the House of Knives. Two agendas on the board. Ballsy. Really ballsy. I was out, you know, unless I ran all three. Uh, you know, I could have taken both of those. All I had to do was say so, but I didn't. This is why his deck is dangerous. Okay, the Deus Ex went back up top. I drew it. I installed it. And I'm going to run HQ. See, the only thing that's going to hurt you in HQ is Fetal AI and, sn and Snare. Yep, there's a pup. I pay two. Yep, yep. Uh, running HQ is really good, because if he has traps he has not installed yet, you can trash most of them for zero. He's thinking about using his House of Knives. I've got four cards. He uses it. Uh, test run, I wanted that. Yeah, I think that Diesel, I remember it specifically because it's so unusual. Ronin, get that out of here. Uh, see, that's why running HQ is good. Now I know, you know, it's one less Ronin I have to worry about. The, um, I remember specifically when I Dieseled, I saw three test runs on that Diesel. So, um... All right, now we got the data sucker. Now we have the data sucker. Why do I need the data sucker if I know his deck is light on ice and only has like your grandpa? Because he has Eli, and I got Inti. So this way, if the Eli shows up, I can go through it. I can maybe index R and D or who knows what. So we're going to run R&D. Yup, there's Eli, see? I'll let it end the run for now. Let's draw and make sure my hand is super full of cards so I don't die. Let's get a Desperado going on. Okay, he's only got one remote. It's one to one. The situation is not very scary right now. I have a Deus Ex on the table. If I had a few clone ships, I would be super ridiculously strong. You know, if I had a decoder, be even stronger. In case of Vigura. Uh oh, two new remotes. Two new remotes. Archives is safe to run. Archives is safe to run. So if I'm going to take credits, which I don't have any right now, right? See, it's like I kind of want to run over there, but I need some money uh, in case it's a fetal, right? I'm running something. Wait, wait, no. So I, I took a credit, and then I'm running. Oh, the Desperado. All right. I ran immediately because the Desperado gives me the credit. I had one, and I remembered I had Desperado. So that means I can run immediately. He's House of knives me. Then there's a Fetal. Yep. I have the two credits. I Deus Ex the two damage from the Fetal. The Desperado. I right, see the Desperado credit brought me from one to two. So you can use the Desperado credit to score a Fetal. Uh, so I did. Drawing back up. Yep. And run archives. I didn't run archives, he just took a credit. I should have run archives to get a credit and a data sucker instead. Oh well. Cerebral in hand. Danger. Ooh, future perfect in hand as well. If I take that, that'll be very close to game. It's not like he can install it. Uh, that's another thing, right? So, Jinteki decks these days that have Future Perfect in them. They can, you know, they rarely can install Future Perfect. 
uh, unless they have an absolutely secure remote, which is very hard for Jinteki to do. Chris doesn't even try to make a secure remote. He plays a pure shell game. So if you know you can run HQ, you can maybe get a Future Perfect, uh, play the side game. He's never going to install it. He's only going to throw it out and use Jackson to rescue it back into R&D. Um, so running HQ, trying to take it. Don't be afraid. Oh, there's another House of Knives he drew right there. He's looking at his already installed cards. Hmm. Well, it's three to one. My Deus Ex is in the trash. That's that's pretty much what's keeping me back right now. Also, the Eli and an ice in front of the Eli. <laughs> but I've got Data Sucker, Inti, and Money now. So um, maybe that I think that's why he installed in front of the Eli is because uh, I'm capable of you know breaking it for two right now at least. Okay, he ices up in front of the Eli, and he makes two more shell games. Two more shells in the game. Nothing is advanced, but he has eight. So if I get could get snared twice, it's possible. Plus, there's a House of Knives. I scavenge the Inti for the Deus Ex. Boom. Pay two credits for that. Not afraid now. Not afraid now. Ooh, trust in the die. See, now, here's the thing, is I'm really tempted by that Eli. Uh, I think I can... I have a parasite in my hand. I think I can blow it away. All right, I'm running. Cerebral, trash it. Good. Good, thank you, lucky die. Thank you. Yep, notice when I spend my third click is when he picks up his hand to start thinking about the next turn because he knows I will not run last click. Okay, so I just dropped some more memory. Uh, I don't really need it. Ah, oh, it was a house of knives. Ah, oh, I could have, I could have taken. Okay, he got my parasite. No, my parasite. Back into the house of knives. At least he doesn't have gila hands, right? He only has five credits. If he sets off a snare, he's down to one. Uh, I should have sort of tried to get him to snare me at this point. Um, to bring him down to one. He really loves to get that first turn gila hands. Um, you know, that's pretty much what powers his economy. Uh, besides, I guess, maybe hedge fund or whatever. Drawing to keep myself from dying. And clone chip, perfect. Yeah, it's like if I draw a clone chip, I sort of want to use it immediately, right? I need to install it right away. I can't run while I have a clone chip in hand because he could house of knives and shoot it out. I need to install, if I draw a clone chip, I need to immediately put it on the table as quickly as possible, even if it means spending a credit and not getting my discount. Um... All right, so now I'm going to run R&D. Yagura. I will take the Yagura in the face. My indexing. No, I was going to use that. Oh, I'm wasting a Deus Ex. Oof. To clone chip, parasite, the Eli, and kill it. I think I have another indexing hand, and this is the only way that I can set it up. 
is to get that Eli out of the way because they can't make success, uh, you know, successive runs in R&D while Eli's there. Um, oh, he's using he used Yugura. He let the card stay there, right? Um, he's using both House of Knives after I said I was going to access. And there's a snare. That's the reason he kept it there. I just used Deus Ex to cancel it. I take the tag, though. And I'll draw two cards. Um, I keep the tag, but that's okay because I have four cards. I guess I, that was maybe a mistake because I could lose to Scorch Neural EMP. Um... But I can't lose to Scorch Neural EMP because he only has one credit. I can't even lose to Scorch. Yeah. So that's the reason I took two cards and did not remove the tag on this turn. Because uh, he only has one credit. Scorch Neural EMP is not a danger. So he takes three credits. I should probably remove the tag this turn. Now I'm going to draw and see what my options are first. Alright, what's in the archives? Nothing, it's totally safe. I will dirty my laundry there. Draw some more cards and throw out a fem. All right. What's happening now? So all I've got is data sucker. Desperado Akamatsu. <laughs> Install and take credits. All right. Still got the tag. Not dead. Put down a zero at man. That will take care of your Gura. Run R and D. Pay two. Get back one from Desperado and a data sucker. And I've got enough data suckers now. Um, it's a Shiku, which does nothing in R and D. So throw that out. Run R and D again. Put it back. Draw card. All right. Now, this is Shikyu in archives now. So, if I run there, I, I face it. You don't face Shikyu in R&D. You face it in archives in HQ and installed. You face it pretty much everywhere except uh, R&D. Hedgy Fund, he's got money now. Denied his Gila hands, but he's got money now. And oof, yeah. Three credits, because there's three remotes. Clone ship. Drew a clone ship. Got to install it right away. I've got everything I need. So I'm going to dirty laundry R&D.
Oh, no, wait. Did I just dirty laundry archives and there's a she there? I should have just dirty laundry R&D. I think I asked if there was anything dangerous in archives, and he said no, or what, you know, it's like, because I had been doing it a bunch already, uh, but it's a tournament, and I think I said I ran there, so I guess it's going to happen. So yeah, I'm going to take the negative point from GQ. That was just a mistake. Um... Right, once the GQ is in the archives, I should never have run there again. But, uh, you know, I sort of had gotten into a habit of it, um, of asking, you know, is there anything dangerous in there? No, okay, I'll run there and fill up. Okay. Now I remove the tag so that I don't die. It was last click, um, and I was down to just three cards because of House of Knives. So I removed the tag so I didn't get scorched to death. Then I clone ship the Deus Ex uh, when his turn starts. Mushin no Shin, his favorite card. Am I ballsy enough to run a three advanced card? Am I ballsy enough to run that? Is that a cerebral? Oh, if it's a June bug, I have a day of six. But if it's a cerebral, that could be game over. If I run it too soon. All right, draw back up to five. Stay safe. Archives is safe now, right? Yes, because the CQ is in my score area. Archives is safe, so I can do this again. I'll just run it twice. Get two credits. Okay, so I did not run the Mushin no Shin card yet. And, oh, he's got his Gila hands now. That's a shame. Ah, oh, I just drew that indexing and I was gonna use it. Just drew it. Yeah, I guess part of the reason I haven't been running the remotes as aggressively as I sometimes do uh, is because I had, you know, I was, I was going for indexing, right? It's and it was it was right there. You know, R and D was lightly defended. Um, you know, but I lost it after losing the second indexing. I should have given up on. Um, you know, I should have just made my R and D pot shots and then uh, check, you know, like one remote a turn or something like that. Ah, same old thing indexing. There we go. Okay. What do we see here? Pay two, get back one, get a data sucker, and... Senor Howard to block the indexing.
A mystery card, a snare, and a mushin nushin going back into R and D. Okay, so in, after the Jackson Howard shuffles up R and D, and I access it uh, post indexing, there's a Jackson Howard which I trash. So not too bad, but not the uh, probably I think in a, <laughs> I don't know if it was a future perfect or something that was on there. More remotes and money. Running R&D, seeing one card. Trashing up. Oh, that's the end of Jackson Howard's. There are no more left. That's good to see. I have one Deus Ex left. Hmm. Stack it up my data suckers because I have way too many of them. He's down to only one House of Knives, which is nice. Uh oh, did he just install a House of Knives? Okay, and he advanced that other card twice. That's been sitting there the whole game pretty much. And I run R&D, I don't see anything. What do I do now? What do I do now? I'm just looking through my trash. I draw. Two more clicks. Take two credits. Desperado. He's advanced, triple advances a card that's been there the whole game, which is Fetal AI. And there's a Philotic. Holy crap, they just came out of nowhere. Wins by scoring. He had three points on the table. The triple advanced Philotic was sitting there unprotected the whole game. The Fetal was double advanced. For his turn, he advanced the Fetal up to five, scored the Fetal, scored the Philotic, went from three to seven. Four point turn. Did not see that coming. He had never done that before ever in all the games I'd played him. I don't know if he came in with that game plan in case he had to play against me. Uh, but yeah, so he flatlines three. Then scores agendas against me. Wow. Unbelievable. The Philotic doesn't even... The damage in the Philotic doesn't do it. It's the points. All I had to do to win that game was be like, run there, run there. I just had to say it. I did, it didn't matter what cards I had in my deck or... Or combos or, or anything. All I had to do was say, run there, run there, run there, and I would have won the game. But I did not say that. I chose not to say those things, so I lost. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh. That's frustrating, right? It's like you play the opponent that you have played more than any other. 
the deck which you have played against more than any other at a big regional tournament. You should win that one, right? You're supposed to win that one, and then you lose that one. But I guess the same could be said for him. He was playing against me, the opponent he's played so many times, with the deck he's played so many times. He should win that one, and he did win that one. Good job, Chris. I will not let you get away with that again. So here we go, another matchup we've done a zillion times. His kit versus my MBN. Mm-hmm. Well, someone from New York City got two more prestige points, as predicted. Go, New York, go! Let's see if we can even it up, right? Uh, if both of us can progress into round five with 12 each. Uh, or will Chris progress with 14, leaving me at 10? Hopefully I'll get a better draw than I got in round two, where all the agendas just came spilling out. Hopefully it'll be more like round three, <laughs> where I got three sand sands in a row. And drained all his money. Looks like I have a nice draw. He drew three vamps. <laughs> and he's mulliganing because he didn't get his magnum opus, which he always wants on turn one. All he wants is Magnum Opus, Workshop, Guardian Blade. Those are the cards he wants at the beginning of the game. Testron, SMC. You know, he likes to see Vamp early, but uh, all three Vamps right away, that's a useless starting hand. You can't get anywhere with that. You need to draw into them after getting your monies. Okay, install, install, hedge fund. Looks like I got something good going on here. SMC, magnum opus, done. Two remotes from me. Two remotes on the turn where he ran his magnum opus with an SMC. He's only got two credits. Um, he could, he's gonna, if he spends clicks running the remotes, he will not be taking credits on those turns, on those clicks. Two pad campaigns. He trashed the second pad campaign. I res the second pad, the first pad campaign. I guess he didn't trash the first one in case the second one was Sansan. If he would have trashed the first pad campaign and the second one was Sansan, I would have been able to keep it. Setting up more remotes, icing up my centrals. Taking money in case it's Sansan, San. it is, he trashes it. Goodbye money, goodbye Sansan. San. Keeping my pad campaign. So far I've broken even on that pad campaign. Let's 
install install I think I did draw install install Getting some monies because it's prize that in the San Santa has to trash. See, I'm not letting him get set up with his Gordian Blade or his workshop or anything. I immediately building all the remotes, you know, even though that's a quandary, which will uh, fall to you know kit very easily. You know, there's another quandary uh, because I rushed out these remotes so quickly, and I know he always gets his magnum opus on his first turn. Right, um, you yeah. know, forcing him to do all this stuff with just money. If that quandary had only been a roto turret, if only I could have blown his magnum opus up. That's why roto turrets in the deck, but I just didn't have it. See, this is a situation where I've got a Sansan, -san, and I think that must be an Ash, and I just don't have an agenda to score on it. But I got a Sweeps Week, so I've got the money. He also has the money. So here I go. Fast track Astro script. He's sitting there with seven credits. If he had a Gordian Blade, he probably would have installed it already. I'm betting. With five cards on my hand, only one of which is an agenda. A San San behind... A quandary with an ash on it. That I can score that Astro Script next turn, and that's a safe fast track. That is what I am betting. I just had to go for it. I couldn't sit there and wait to draw an agenda. I need to score Astro Script right now before he has a chance to get his business working. You know, before I get vamped or uh, who knows what. Right, he's got indexing. And okay, the workshop is coming, so he's basically going to let me score the Astro Script and get his FEM working. I guess the fact that I fast tracked the Astro Script uh, gives away that I didn't have an agenda to score. Um, and it also tells him all the agendas are in R&D, and the game is in R&D. And he's got indexing, so that's probably what he's aiming for now. Just index. I'm aiming to... I guess I need enough money to be able to score, uh, which is why I took some credits there. Uh, and I guess I also need enough credits to res my ice. Um, and protect uh, my R&D. 
But other than that, all I really need now is to draw cards. I have an Astro Token and a Red Sand Sandy Can't Trash. Yet. Yep, Testra and Gordian Blade. There it is. How many credits does he have there? Eight? I guess he can go for the Sand Sand now. Click three, run. Break for one. I res Ash. Yeah, that's another reason I took credit. So I could res Ash. Trace six, Ash. All right, he's got no link. You'll probably just trash Ash only. There's no point in doing anything else. Yep, trash Ash only. Next turn, he will need six credits to uh, get rid of that. He'll probably just take two, run and trash it. Hopefully, I'll get an agenda to score before he does that. Oh, scavenge the Gordian Blade to keep it installed. Ooh. And, oh yes, another Astro Script. I have two Astro Tokens now. Things are looking good. It's 4-0. Go ahead and trash my Sand Sand. That doesn't even matter now. Uh, I can win the game with those two Astro Tokens. I am good to go. I am good to go. Go ahead and trash my Sand Sand. I guess it could matter a little bit, maybe? Yeah, it could matter because, uh, you know, if I power draw, which I'm definitely going to do now. I see, oh, I guess I need some money. After I take, like, two credits, right? Uh, two credits, I can score anything. Uh, I'll power draw, right, probably for the remainder of the game. And if I have a Sand Sand Rezzed, I could theoretically draw an agenda on click two and score it. Uh, if he trashes the Sand Sand, I would have to draw the winning agenda on an earlier click, one click earlier. Uh, to be able to score it, right? Let's say it's an NAPD, right? Let's say I draw like a breaking news, uh, right? I would have to like use uh, one of the Astros to score the breaking news immediately. If it's an NAPD that I draw, um, you know, I could score it out of hand, but I would need to have the NAPD on the mandatory draw. R&D interface, oof. And I've got no credits to speak of, but I actually... Pop-up window! So I'll take the credit. No res. Access. Two cards. Trashing the Ash, which is the second card. I'll draw something I know is not an agenda. Draw again. Gotta draw some cards he has not seen. Because uh, those are where the agendas can be. Take a credit so I have enough to score with. Throw out some cards that are not agendas. I wish I could have a Jackson Howard right now. Uh, I already used my only fast track to get into this position. So I don't think that was a bad move, but if I had another fast track right now, I would use it. Just boom, and I could score immediately with it. Uh, okay, so he runs. Now that I have credits from the pop-up, wraparound appears. Perfect. Pretty much couldn't ask for a better ice to be there. Um, I think I started the game with two wraparounds and then two code gates, and it's kit, so I set it up perfectly. But he brought out his fem uh, to aim at the wraparound, so, yep, aiming Femme at wraparound, so he's getting in there for two credits, installing a new ice.
The game is in R&D. Runs R&D. Two pop-up windows. That will pay for any scoring that needs to happen. Now it's 100% draw from here on out. Jackson Howard is dead. Sweep, sweep. Useless. Pad campaign. Why did even res it? Draw. 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 Just keep drawing. Where are the agendas at? Sweep for no reason. Okay, I've got enough money for the rest of the game now, no matter what happens. Uh-oh, Beal. Astro. Whoa, the game is suddenly tied. Well, <laughs> there were the agendas. I was trying to draw for him. I didn't find him. There they were, right in between my draws on his turn. He interfaces once and gets them both. If that got to my turn, it would have been game over. Alright, I use my Sand Sand and my Astro Strip together to score an NAPD. I still have a Sand Sand, I still have an Astro token. Breaking news will do it. But he played indexing. The uh, end. Okay, wait. <laughs> he indexes properly. He runs, he pays three, and he runs and pays three again. Oh, oh, there they were. Oh, oh my God, I was going to win, but I didn't. So close, so close. I guess I could have tried to ice R&D harder, but since he only had one interface, uh, I figured I could draw through. He was at zero. I was at four with two tokens and a sand sand. Um, you know, that lets me draw a lot. I could draw right through his interface. Um, thought I could get some agendas. I mean, his indexing saw two um, after an interface scored two at once. Uh, other interfaces came up blank, though. He did get a lot of runs. Uh, someone else can do the math on whether he got more agendas than he should have. But yeah, uh, this is the case for fast track, right? If I had a fast track, uh, probably would have a second fast track. I probably would have won that game. I would have just whoop, I'll go get my third Astro ship and score it immediately, right? And then I, I did manage to get that any PD, which I would have been able to score. So that's the difference right there. So I lose two. Uh, I still only have 10 prestige going into round five. That was round four. Chris from New York playing Kit Engine Techie goes into round five with one loss. Only one loss. His kit deck lost one game. Jinteki undefeated, flatlining all opponents, except for me, where he scored seven points. Um, and his kit beating all opponents, including me, uh, except for one opponent. I think he played in round three or so. So, things are looking uh, pretty good for New York. I mean, even only at, 14, uh, at 10 points, I'm still... Uh, you know, is he five and three? And Chris is seven and one. And the other New Yorkers are doing well. So I will probably upload the remaining two rounds of Swiss tomorrow, rounds five and six. And then we can begin the elimination rounds. Ooh.